but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Hello and welcome to my channel. So in this video I'm going to discuss the second part of my fasting experience. I did the first part on the 19th day and this is the 40th day and it's the 3rd of November. So I must say that this fasting wasn't as hard as the previous ones although there were a couple of days that was a bit harder but not to the point that I couldn't cope um, and it wasn't to the point that I was hungry it was more of like I was losing concentration and it was very difficult to stay at my desk so I would usually just drift off and read some news which led me to terrible news that I have read. <laughs> um, one of the things that I noticed was and it's due to some of the news that I've read is um, my concerns for young children and women became very high i was very sensitive to that and also because i read a story about i think i talked about it in my first video a young girl who went to the post office in south africa and got raped and murdered by the post office worker i think to me the triviality of it is what got to me and it made me very concerned as a woman as a young woman even though i don't live in south africa it made me very concerned and I just thought to myself, it's just the way he went about it. He used her, discarded her and expected to not be blamed for it. It's like he just thought it was okay. And I just thought, yeah, I got a bit concerned about being a woman and I got very worried about being a woman. I was extremely sensitive. And I think it's the same now, but I'm slowly easing away from it. And it wasn't just her. There was also Jessie, Janika, um, Natasha, in the space of just August, those girls, either they just, and Megan as well, they either just got killed or they just got killed for the most stupid things ever. And it just goes to show how stupid human beings can be, you know, just because you want something that you cannot have and you want to force yourself to have that specific thing that you want. And obviously, their time is with God. God is going to judge these individuals. And they these victims will have justice if they do not get justice on this earth they will get justice when judgment day comes so that is one issue that was really upon my heart i believe that in this part of my fasting i have been really really tested i think reading all those news sort of like puts a lot of pressure on me i just got to think what is the point of life anyway because i'm like people are just treating other people with no care whatsoever you know to be murdered because of flat screen tv and to be murdered for a whole lot of stuff children being abused i was thinking what's the point of this life at all why are we even striving why am i even struggling to get such and such and it just occurred to me that this is a testing moment for me um and in a way it is a good thing because it's sort of like i felt like it was sort of I'm going through this to see how my faith in God can be affected by it and it only strengthened my prayer life whilst reading all these stuff I became more worried and concerned for um, humanity in general and then I decided to pray for those who are the most vulnerable and also praying that God will glorify himself in all those situations obviously you're supposed to pray and also support them in any way that you can uh, when you're fasting so that is where my concerns were I am still praying for the victims of the abusive abusive month of August in South Africa for the women that perished during those times both unlawfully and in the most awful way nobody deserves to die in the way that Megan died no one deserves to die in the way that Janika died no one deserves to die in the way that he many died as well so i am praying for the families and i'm praying that they will heal because this is not something that you can take lightly and anyone who's taking this issue lightly saying that you know it's just another crime no it is not another crime in my opinion if those people were healthy and able to do a whole lot of stuff and were going about their way it was not their time to die but this I believe. I believe that since we are selfish and we want something that we cannot have, because of the doing of men, their lives have been cut short prematurely. And that's what actually hurts me the most. I don't think anyone has the power to take somebody else's life. It is not in your 
in your power to do that because you have your life and they have their life your selfishness and your wanting to do what you want shouldn't cause someone else's life because the bible has already told us all these stuff about having a selfish heart and wanting to get this and because you know you cannot get it you kill in order to have it and this is exactly what i saw in the month of august with the news that I, um the articles that i read in south africa it's a shame but we have to live with it until christ comes i believe one other thing is I found myself thinking about death a lot and I guess it all comes from the fear of the articles that I read concerning those young women who were basically killed by cowards. I think that it put some sort of fear in me which I, I think is slowly going because I realised that it was fear. I found myself constantly thinking about it mostly and I came to the point that it's probably putting too much fear in me fear of just being a woman basically uh you're just not safe it got me to think a lot about death and it got me thinking that it could happen anytime because to her on a saturday i'm going to the post office to get my stuff jesse she was at home chilling with her grandfather she had worn something megan i probably don't know she probably you know this is what i usually do and then you just never know when your end is coming so it just got me to think about life and how i'm living am i too worried about something am i too unforgiving is there any point in actually overthinking this is there any point about worrying about anything at all and then i just got to myself and i thought you know just for me my greatest worry was trying to find um another job before my contract ends and i think that that was what was weighing on my mind and i was getting a bit agitated and annoyed to do because of the fact that i would apply for a job go for the interview go for the second round or go for the interview they sound so promising and it's like you either i either don't get a job or you don't have the skills that we need meanwhile when I look at my skills and the qualification that I have, I do have the skills and I do have the qualification. So in a way, it's a way of like my testing process, you know, going through the fire as a gold being refined. And in addition to looking at life and thinking and knowing that it's not all that it is caught up to be and that there's only one person that I can trust in, which is God. He's the one who can give and take. He's the one who calls the dry bones to form. He calls flesh to form on the dry bones and he breathes life into those bodies. With that said, because I was reading a lot on the book of Daniel, I came to realize that God from what was happening he was basically putting kings in places taking them away and bringing other ones in so if the god who made heaven and earth is able to put people in place and put people away to put kings in place who are able to bless his own people then he is more than able to help me i may not have i may not have been able to find a job now and although i may have time and i may not be able to leave at the time that i want but I know and I am reassured that he will provide. This is also one of the testing of my faith that I had to go through throughout this fasting. Everything I feel like has worked together to help with uh, looking at life, both the articles that I read and both everything that has happened, reading the word of God. It's, it has helped me to analyze my life. It has helped me to look at life a little bit differently and then it comes to the realization that you know we should set all our affections and probably all our thoughts on things above and not on things on the earth because at the end of it all we're all going to die it is your destination on the hereafter that is more important the things that you may go through now are just moments in time in the future it may not happen you may be in a better place or in the future you may not be alive and where will you find yourself so i would say that my faith throughout this second part of the fasting has been strengthened it has been tried and it is still being tried and i'm still being refined and i am so grateful to god that he led me to places in his word and also through preachings that I listen to and also preachings at church which has helped me strengthen my faith in him through our Lord Jesus Christ 
during this moment and now I am so assured in the fact that he will provide he is listening he is there he can hear my prayers he will answer them according to his will so during this fasting I came across a few articles where basically talks about the abuse of children children as young as six months and the gravity of that uh, particular article led me to add another prayer another prayer um, topic to my daily prayers and which included praying for children who lived in vulnerable countries in vulnerable homes where they're not protected um, and are being abused by people around them. Children are the future and we have to make sure that they grow up in a very safe environment so that they're not, you know, paranoid growing up or um, confused growing up. So I also added this to my prayer life. So if you are basically waiting on God for something through prayer, do not give up. He will provide that for you according to his will. He may give you something else. He may give you something totally different to what you are actually praying for. You just have to be very careful and make sure that you are listening and watching. Um, as I said, he may give it to you at a different time. He may wait uh, until he feels you're ready until um he gives it to you if you're going through any fearful moments at this moment i would say that you should take your refuge in god because all that stress you cannot change much you should pray and don't just pray pray and do something about it because in nehemiah's time when they had issues rebuilding the house of god in jerusalem there were people that were threatening to basically stop them. What they did was they prayed and they went to work and they had a sword in one hand to fight. So you have to pray, do something about it and be ready to do something against anything that is that's going to try and distract you from getting to the point that you need to get to so this is just a piece of advice for anyone if you have actually done any fasting at all do share your experience i'm very very interested in hearing your experience about this fasting psalms 34 i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to, to them that fear him. Anyway. Thank you so much for sticking with me and until next time it is goodbye don't forget to like bye bye god bless you